brown, yellow, and blue marks on the unground surface. What causes this and what can we do to get rid of it? Okay, this is something I deal with all the time with my customers, or at least my customers who are grinding ferrous materials or steels or stainless steels or high-speed steels, uh, companies grinding nickel alloys and whatnot. And this is, well, what's the difference between oxidation burn and genuine thermal damage? Uh, and that's a big subject because uh, there are a lot of different types of thermal damage depending on what temperature you reach. Uh, oxidation burn is just rust. You take a chunk of metal out of your car, you leave it in the rain for a few days, you come back, it's kind of reddish color because the iron in the steel is combining with oxygen in the atmosphere and getting that thin layer of rust. It's the same with work pieces if you're grinding ferrous materials you're grinding, the temperature gets high, and the iron in the steel reaches out, finds oxygen in the atmosphere, combines uh, to form iron oxides. Iron oxides, brown, yellow, and blue marks. And you can actually get an idea of what the temperature was re that was reached based on what colors you have. But here's a typical situation that I see with a lot of my customers. What you have is the ground surface, which is clean, and then you have the unground surface, which gets the brown, yellow, and blue marks, the oxidation burn or the rust. Now, the temperature on the unground surface did not get near as high as the temperature on the ground surface. However, the grinding wheel came, and the trailing edge of the grinding wheel just sort of cleaned up that oxidation burn on the ground surface, but obviously didn't clean it up on the unground surface. Temperature didn't get that high, maybe three or 400 degrees C, but that's still where we get the oxidation burn. Now, how do we get rid of that, or at least how do we reduce it? Now, you can work really hard in choosing a grinding wheel. You can work really hard in reducing your heat generation. You can work really hard in improving your cooling, but you're going to have a really tough time getting rid of that oxidation burn because it begins at such a low temperature. The best approach is just to take a separate coolant nozzle and point it at that oxidizing region. It doesn't have to be high velocity, just has to cover that oxidizing region. That'll do two things. Number one, it'll reduce the temperature. If the temperature goes down, well, then the rate of oxidation is going to go down. And number two, if you have coolant there instead of air, the iron in the workpiece is reaching out into the atmosphere, trying to find oxygen to oxidize with to form that iron oxide. But it's not there what it finds is coolant, water-based coolant, oil coolant. There's not much oxygen in that compared to the air. So in a sense, what we do is we starve the workpiece of oxygen. We prevent it, or at least retard it, from forming that oxide layer. So here's a very typical example is in uh, point grinding on a drill, but really it could be anything, is don't mess around with your main arc of cut cooling. You know, have a good cooling velocity there get good cooling, but put an extra separate coolant nozzle aimed right at the oxidizing region, cool that oxidizing region, starve it of oxygen, and you'll find that your oxidation burn is eliminated or at least reduced drastically.